Welcome everyone to the first tour for today. If, like me, you didn't sleep a lot yesterday night, well, uh, I hope to keep you awake, and as you know, I'm using a microphone to do that. And my talk is about sound, so I hope to, to show you something interesting. So, my name is Gianluca Memoli, it's an Italian name, as you might guess from my Oxford accent. And um, I've been working in acoustics for, well, now 14 years. I've been doing all of strange stuff, I've been doing noise, I've been doing soundscapes, which is the word that people use to describe how we perceive sound and how we design space around it. I've been doing, I've been a bubble scientist for now, for 12 years, and now I'm working on metamaterials. But my talk today comes from my experience as a, an amateurial festival. So when I, when I direct a play, I can tell to my light person, can I please have a spotlight? Or can I please have a light there? Can I have a diffuse light? Can I have a light which follows a character? I cannot do that with sound. With sound, I have to rely on speakers which are placed in strategic positions by, by people who know what to do that. And you can see that uh, that is a, an array for a concert. <coughs> what we do is we design those so that everyone in the room hears the same sound. So, let me show you something from my days as a consultant. Imagine this is a theatre and what you see there is the sound which is going on. And as it goes on, you see the waves which propagate and suddenly everything is uh, filled with sound. The same sound for everyone. But that's not what we do with light. So, uh, well, when it doesn't figure, of course. So, my idea is, can we get the same? Can we do the same with sound that we do with love? So that's my, the outline of my talk. And I start with what we can do and what they do in optics. And eventually I tell you about metamaterials and the exciting opportunities that they offer to us. And you can see some stuff here, and I might need some volunteers in the audience to help me with my talk. So, what can we do today? So, what you see here are two, two pictures about uh, Dolby waves, so surround sound. Now, what I would like you to get uh, from your seats in the audience is how many speakers do you need to do a 5 plus 1 uh, surround system in a home? Can you guess? <laughs> well, it's written there, isn't it? So, what about if you go to the cinema? How many speakers can you actually get to have an experience in an IMAX? Any guess? 40. 40. Any other number? 22. 22. 22 is typically the answer, isn't it? No? <laughs> so, normally, you can reach up to 64 speakers. And even in that case, the, the feeling that you have is great, but it's an illusion. Sound is not really around you. You are tricked to believe that. But there is other applications where you need a lot of speakers to control the shape of sound. So one of that is the diagnostic. So we are all familiar with the idea of using ultrasound to see babies in the womb of, of mum. And now people is using uh, ultrasound also to cure and to destroy tumors. And this is an image from uh, destroying prostate cancer with ultrasound. So how many speakers, or ultrasonic speakers, do you need for this application? What about the first, uh, the MAM one? How many? 61. Any other? One? Okay, so you need about 100 speakers to get an effect of a beam which gives you an image on the screen. And if you want to hear, the number increases. So, all of these technologies work in the same way. You have a lot of speakers and a computer at the back which controls them like a director of an orchestra conductor does with the orchestra. So the conductor tells them, you play, no, it's your time to play, no, it's your time to play, no, it's your time to play. So each of them is tuned to a note, and in this way, they create a shape. What I just described is called uh, digital signal processing. And, well, the, the simple way of saying that, but you also see that in front of that probe, uh, there is something which 
in that it's labelled an acoustic lens. So there might be then a way to improve the performance of these devices. But my goal today is to demonstrate to you that maybe in a short future all these devices will be obsolete. And we can do sound control in our garage. So to do that, I use um, a case study, which is levitation. So acoustic levitation has been around for a while. Uh, you cannot levitate men, unfortunately, because you would need the power supply that's of a big coal plant. But you can levitate polystyrene beads. And so what I'm doing here is I'm getting some polystyrene beads, which of course, since I'm live, they're not getting on the, on the, on the, on the object here, on the scoop. So what I do is I take my polystyrene beads, I put them here, and what I have here is a wave which is trapped between two sets of speakers, ultrasonic speaker, and that's why you don't hear them. And we need a bit of house cleaning for that. And I know that the people who are cleaning this room will hate me after that. But eventually, when it works, something levitates. So let me show you the video. <laughs> and then you can come and try. I had someone try that earlier to ch check that it was working. Uh, well, you can try it later. So what you can do with this is actually controlling the timing of the speaker. You can move objects in midair. And so you can make parts, you can make figures, you can make shapes. You can transmit information. And then you can load two of them together and move them around. So this work was done in University of Bristol uh, from my former supervisor. You can see it's quite cool, isn't it? But what you really want is not that. What you really want is this. What you want is to control by remo in remote with sound something far away. What you want is the possibility of dragging something from you or sending it away. So the first step in that direction comes here where you have levitation on only one side. I don't have this demo. What you see is that you create basically a shape. So you create a shape, a cup, which takes the, the particle and keeps it afloat. So the problem with these technologies, so before we can actually use them, is that the cost ramps up very quickly. So transducers are very easy. Speakers are very easy to control, but you need a lot of them if you want to have a control, a spatial control in, to the seat of this audience, for instance. And then there is a physics limit, because speakers are big. They need to be big, because sound has a wavelength which is quite big. And so, if they are not big, then they don't respond to buses. So there is a technology limit in making speakers, and the same applies to ultrasonic speakers. But in optics, they don't do that. What they do, since the time of Archimedes, is they use lenses. And what we do for those lights is we use reflectors, which change the shape of the light. We use lenses to we put objects in the middle between the source, so the light, and myself, to change what happens to the light. So why can't we do that with sound? So these devices have been around for a lot of time for light, so much that actually if you take a, a five pound note, you'll find an hologram in it, or the Big Ben. So we normally use these things in our everyday life. Why can't we use them for sound? And if we can use for them for sound, let me show you what you can do, not without going that direction, but the other direction, this way. So that is the example of a lighthouse. And what they do is they use what is called a Fresnel lens to send light away, long, long distances. And what you see down there is a design, so it's um, measurements that I recently did with my special lenses for sound that project the sound of a speaker from here to the tent down there in workshop one, I believe. All, this, all of this is done with metamaterials. So what is a metamaterial? Well, metamaterials are devices which are engineered to have a special property. Well, w w saying that, I said nothing, because with these words, I can describe everything. I can describe a guitar. I can describe a shredder diffuser, which is the one that you see on top and that is used in concert halls. I can, I can describe a sponge. The trick is that these materials, and I have some of them here, 3D printed, can be made of any actual material, 
but you can shape them inside so that the sound gets delayed in this particular case. So how, does it look, how do they look like? Well, they look like, well, this is a big version. So this is a big lens, and this covers the highest uh, note of a piano. Quite bulky, isn't it? So, but also, you can have them in the shape of soda cans. So this was my first, uh, the first lens that I saw. This is done with the trick that you use to make a, a xylophone with glasses. So you fill the glasses with different uh, depth or liquid. And in this way, you set, they send the sound around. You can see the speakers at the corners there. And they created a spot. Now, what was my contribution to this is that I found that actually you can do this in a much simpler way and you just need Lego-like bricks to do this. So instead of uh, taking the cans and filling them every time, you, can, you just need 16 types of cans or of shapes to give you the max a control on sound beyond what you can perceive. Just like you need 26 letters to make any word. So how do they work? What they do is they, well, I have a microphone here. Let me go closer. So what, how do they look like? They are like objects where you can change the, si the size of the maze inside. And you can have a go at this after my talk. And by changing the size of the maze, you change the time the sound passes inside, like in that picture. And you see that depending on the, the length of the maze, you change a different delay. So what you see in this picture is a wave which takes more and more time to reach this point here. So in this way, you control phase, just like you do that with a, a digital processing, but in a passive way. And so what you can do with it, then, is by using these bricks, you can do, obviously, levitation. So what that one is, oh no, I went too, too quick. So let me try this one first. So these are the bricks. And you can hear the go-jetters on the background, probably. That's my son who is keeping himself occupied while I, I talk to you. And we use 16 of those bricks. And by putting them together, and you can see that I'm doing that very quick in this, in this movie. It doesn't take so, it's, it's not so quick in real life. What you can do is you can make patterns. And so with these patterns, two of them, I can put them together and I can make them to levitate, which is what I needed. So with a, with a speaker, a general speaker, and two objects that I 3D printed, I can do levitation. And if I can do levitation, I can do much more because I can do a lot. Levitation is a way for me to show you that I have control. It's a way for me to show you that I have the power. But in reality, levitation is something that may be, well, it managed to, to bring me on TV, on ITV to levitate food, uh, but not, maybe it's far from real application, unless we can control it so well that we can use this type of control into the body, for instance, to deliver medicines. But since this is uh, a ICT-friendly community, let me tell you that you can do more. Just like, suppose you don't have space to have, or you don't want to print uh, 16 types of bricks, what you can do is you can use techniques to use less of them. And these are very similar to the one you use in, image co in uh, compressing images, in doing the, a JPEG, for instance. And in this way, I'm using less of them, 11, if I remember correctly, in this, in this one. And still, I can get levitation. And if I can go further, I can then levitate with just eight bricks. Which means that if you can be clever, then given a space and some requirements on the sound that you want to control, then you can transform one of these which is bulky, into one of those. And they have the same effect on a normal speaker. Now, 
What's the problem? The problem is that you, the limit, well, the advantage or the problem is that at the moment the limit is how small you can make this with 3D printing. And the problem is that the other bit is at the moment compared to a lot of speakers controlled electronically uh, by processing is that this solution is static while the others are dynamic. But we learn from optics that turning lenses into something dynamic is not too difficult. You can use that for uh, uh, headsets in 3D displays. So let me go to applications. Because I can see that probably you're already wondering what are we are doing here? Why are we wasting my time here at 10 o'clock? So this was uh, Iron Man. And German. so as a scientist, I feel that I always waffles. try to catch up yeah, uh, with Hollywood. And that is uh, one of my challenges at the moment. And what you see here is that uh, soon to become Iron Man is trying to find vibranium Mark in a map. But there is something in this yeah, which is implicit. So it's not just an hologram there, which let's, it, let's it can pass some, through. Uh, color coding. Uh, color it's color not just telling the computer, color please color spin. Color it can do more than that. Rest. It can actually, and Walking. this is even clearer later in the movie, and you can actually the touch ah. the stuff. So he uh, is doing what's technically, so did you see uh -huh. that? He spinned it just um, by touching. So he knows where to put his hand. So what's up there? So this is what called is technically like media optics. Can we do that not. already? Yes, we can, with speaker arrays. So this is a, a company in Bristol uh, which sells devices which transform and gives you shapes in media made of sound. So how does it work? You have a lot of speakers, and if they send the sound at the same time, on your hand you feel nothing. But if you time that with different delays, then this eventually creates a spot on your hand, and you feel something. And if you create many spots at the same time, then you can create shapes. And so then, in this case, you can then create the outside of a sphere. So can I do that with metamaterials? Yes, I can, and I can do much more. Because with metamaterials, I can create shapes which are more complex all at one time. So. Uh, this, we have a demo here, I have a demo here where you will be able to touch sound if you come a bit later. But what I want to show you, and that's the demo we will do now, is this. So this is again catching with Hollywood. This is Minority Report 2002. And now if we add the audio, we could be hearing that Tom Cruise is passing around, recognized, recognized, and seen at the bird. You could use a Guinness right about now. Our thoughts are about Don Edgerton. Yeah. Yeah. So that's personalized message. So that is sound just for a person who is passing by. And we do that. So that's the movie again. You can move the old So at the moment. This is usually show, and let me show you how it works. So you have a, a speaker, so this is one made uh, by us uh, at Sasset, so in house, and uh, let me show you how it works. Let me use some of the speakers. already out there. Now let me show you what you can do with my materials. So I do that instead of doing this. So can you still raise your hand if you hear the sound? Okay, so now I do. So did anything change? So the people here start raising their hands where they were not before. So what I did is I put something in front and I changed the direction of the sound. And I can shape this in a way that actually goes around this pillar here and creates an area of silence in the middle with sound all around. Now imagine you are in a disco and you are dancing and eventually uh, 
there is a space in the middle of the dance floor where you can talk and decide that it's time to go. Or you can also go to the bar and finally talk to the barman and get yourself understood and then maybe make an order without seeming to be so silly. Or, and this is what we illustrated at CS this year uh, in Las Vegas, you can be in the car and you create zones. So you have a speaker, so the driver which is listening to the GPS and the passenger who is listening to the music and my son at the back who is listening to his, uh, the sound of his uh, uh, CDs and we are not hearing each other. So it's a world where you have perfect control to the seat level of sound without so if you push this further, like the as physics is also works the other way around, you can then cancel stuff in some So this was a window, you see there are a lot of the company that we are trying to start, and this is a window which lets the air through, but not cancel the sound within a physics range. So imagine now you have an air conditioning unit on that side, you will not hear it, but you will see that. So, where are we going with this? The way you see that, is the way I see it, is that we are going to a world where we will not use headphones anymore. Where we will have uh, 3D shapes on our phones that you can touch. Where we will, instead of having personalized uh, rings for my mom, I can have a shape where I can feel that it's my mom falling and I can decide not to answer. <laughs> or, we are going to a world where if you are sitting on a sofa, I can send Spanish to that side and English to that side, and you can learn a language just by changing seats on a sofa. So what we are doing is we are going to give you, and we are reaching, a world where we have control of sound just like we have on the LCD, CD, which as you can see is quite cool today. But I'm trying to change the way we think sound. At the moment, sound is something that either we have or we don't. Either we have it on our efforts or we don't. Um, we are changing sound in a way that there will be just the right sound for everyone. For medical applications, for uh, concert halls, for uh, controlling your cars in your, in your sofa, in your sitting rooms, in your kitchen. So we are going beyond what we can do with a lot of our speakers through materials that we engineer specifically to do that. So thanks for your attention and I hope uh, you enjoyed my talk and we are recruiting for this if you are interested. Uh, otherwise, please ask your questions. Thanks a lot.